Hey guys, I'm with the world's strongest man, and this is the ultimate deadlift tutorial video. Get up and get down, get up and get down. Hey, what's up guys? Thanks so much for stopping my YouTube channel today. I am joined by Martins, and we are going to talk about how to deadlift. Now, Martins knows a thing or two about lifting some heavy weight. I want to know what are some of the things that you think about whenever you're getting ready to deadlift. Oh boy. Okay. So number one, when I grab the bar, it depend depending on your stance, of course. Uh, I personally like to push my knees out uh, so I could get a little bit more of an upright torso. That also means my arms are going to be a little bit wider. This is good for if you use straps. A little bit of tougher grip to do without straps. Uh, my first, the, the first thing I like to do is I like to try to bend the bar flex my triceps and my lats together. I almost ima try to imagine that I'm just pushing back on something like so. And this gets my uh, lats to activate better. Uh, and as I'm pu pulling the bar in against my shins, I initiate to rise my hips right when the bar reaches midfoot, and then I pull through. I also like to think on the eccentric uh, to split up the deadlift into two parts, which is a Romanian and a squat. On the eccentric, initiate by pushing my hips back, but not shifting my knees forward until the bar gets right underneath my, my, my patella. Then I actually keep my bot back angle relative to the floor the same, and then I squat the weight down. Same thing on the way up. I have my back angle set. I squat the weight up, keeping my back angle the same all the way up until the bar gets beyond my patella, and then I angle upwards. So two movements in one, squat, RDL, RDL, squat. There we go. So Martins is gonna get on the bar and show us a um, couple lifts. And we're gonna add some weight as he feels good. Um, again, Martins is working through a couple different injuries right now. So we're not gonna go crazy heavy. If you wanna see that evaluation of his lower body and some of the things that we're doing to get him back to pain free, go check out part one of our YouTube fix. Just 60 kilos to start off right now. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the big things that I always try to tell young athletes that are learning to deadlift for the first time is to get extremely stiff and create a lot of tension to your core and upper body before the barbell is ever moved from the ground. Too often we think about trying to just lift the weight. We don't think about getting very, very stiff and tight before you then try to move the weight. Very good. Now, what Martins is using right now is more of a touch and go deadlift technique. But you'll notice on the way down, he's going to breathe and rebrace his core as he drops the bar back down. He's not just going to relax the bar down, he's going to lower it with intention. And this makes sure that he's not just getting work done on the ascent, but also on the descent. It's working for him. So he's gaining strength by working his body by lowering it down under control. One of the cues I like to use as well during this time where he's dropping it down is to tap the ground like you're touching the bar down, touching an eggshell, don't break the eggshell. And that makes sure that you're able to maintain the stiffness and control of the bar throughout the entire uh, movement. You're not just bouncing it off the ground and losing that tension. So just like the squat, it's all about maintaining that stiffness in your torso throughout the entire range of motion so that you have complete control of the bar. How does it feel so far? Very good so far. Very good. And I like to definitely reinforce that learning to control the bar path smooth and slow on the eccentric is crucial to building a strong deadlift. This will help teach you to brace your back tighter and doing that eccentric slowly also promotes a better bar path. You want to add a little bit more weight? Right yep, there. that felt yeah. great. So we're going to add a little bit more weight, and then I'm going to show you guys another cue that I really like. All right, guys, so for our second set, what we're going to be showing you guys is, first thing first, lats. Whenever Martins is going to get ready to lift that bar, he's going to lock his lats down, pulling back, and really trying to engage these big muscles right here. 
What that's going to do is create a ton of torsal stiffness before the bar is moved from the ground. A lot of times athletes don't engage their lats enough and what those do is extend the arms and keep the bar nice and close to your body. If that bar travels away from your shin, it's gonna pull a lot more stress on your back. It's gonna be that much harder to complete the rest of your lift. So he's gonna get down, he's gonna lock his lats down and back, pull his arms tight, and then start his lift. Now another thing Martins likes to do, we were just talking about, is when he's down in the bottom position, he's gonna drive his knees out to the side before the bar leaves the ground to engage his hips. Now, even though this is a deadlift, people often think that it's just an upper back, it's a pulling motion. It's just as much of a pushing motion with the legs into the ground. And by engaging those hip muscles, driving the knees out to the side, and really pushing the feet into the ground, you're going to guarantee that you're lifting in uh, engaging those legs and the upper back, pulling sort of both ways. A lot of people will call this almost like a trust fall, is you have just as much push with the legs as you do pulling back. How'd that feel? Felt really good. I'd also like to say on light weights, I build up so much upper back tension that you'll even see the bar leave the floor before I even initiate leg drive. Uh, just because I tense up so much. Yeah. So check this out. Come into this position. Just getting that lat activation. If I'm not focusing on keeping the weight down, it leaves the floor. That's how much upper back and lat tension I'm creating. Yeah, I remember when I was talking to uh, Eddie Cohen the other day, he was talking about how on one of his huge lifts, seven, 800 pounds, he is basically seeing the bar almost leave the ground before he even initiates his pull just because of how much stiffness he has yes, into it. It's exactly the yeah. same, yeah. Now one thing he likes to do is he would talk about uh, almost like a wiggle to get down in, into a very stiff position. So wow. almost like finding your stiff bottom position and feeling stiffness before yeah. getting up and, and lifting the bar. Um, what do you think about with your chest and your upper body? in your initiation of the pull. Do you think about getting your back tied or lifting your chest up a little bit? What do you I like think to about really think about pulling my shoulders back and down as much as possible. Of course, with really heavy weights, I cannot by any means keep them there, but I'm always tensing up as, max, as much as I can before I initiate the lift. So that way there's very little to no dip of my upper back or shoulder blades. Now, one thing to always talk about whenever it comes to deadlifting, is limiting back movement. Now you will see some uh, elite powerlifters, some strongmen that will have just a little bit of a thoracic spine round, just a slight amount of slight curvature. And especially the more muscle they have in their upper back, the more it will look pronounced like that. But what they're not doing is allowing their back to move as they lift the bar from the ground. In order to remain resilient in that spine and ward off injuries and make sure that you're performing to your greatest potential, we have to lock that spine down and move about your hips. So especially, obviously this video is on the deadlift and not the Atlas stone lift, but um, with that, you have, with the Atlas stone, you have a little bit more of a background. There definitely is a, plenty of a background in Atlas stone. Mm -hmm. The thing is with an Atlas stone is uh, there, there's very little shearing tension on your spine because your uh, vertebrae have nowhere to shift to because Atlas stone is essentially uh, becoming an extension of your spine. Mm -hmm. Your back is, your, your torso is so locked in with the shape of the stone that your back has nowhere to really slip to. So, so it's, it's locked in, it's more. locked into position. And you're, you're not moving, moving about your hips. Yeah, only at the very ex top does the back actually extend and move. Exactly. That's just in the very top. So of the a lot of people will talk about back rounds during the deadlift. And the big yeah. thing is even with the deadlift or an Atlas stone, even though your back is slightly curved, especially more with an Atlas stone, you're not rounding your back more. There's no more movement of the spine. That's right. So there's a difference between, and this is obviously a little bit more sciencey, but back flexion movement and back flexion moment. Moment is just a torque action. Because the weight's in front of you, you're gonna have a little bit of torque movement of wanting to bend the spine, but the spine is held in place. So there's torque placed on the spine, but the joints aren't moving more. There's not flexion movement. I like that, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I'll, you'll see like uh, JF Caron, for example, he deadlifts with the rounded back, but like just like Aaron said, is his back stays that same curvature up until this point. What you will not see is him drive with the legs and then snake his back up. Yeah. So the big thing, if you're a young athlete, you're new to deadlifting, and you're really trying to push the weights, and you see by filming yourself that your back is moving, it's rounding as you're continuing to lift the bar from the ground. 
It just means at this time, you need to drop weight. You really focus on stability of the core and technique. You don't really necessarily need to go and do a bunch of core exercises, but just focus on maintaining that brace and tension and going slow and building up as your body's able to build capacity to maintain that stability. That's right. Cool. All right, let's maybe add a little bit more weight. We're gonna add good. more weight. There we go. All right, guys, so on our last set, we've got one more cue to think about as far as how to set up. I'm gonna let Martins take it away. So this, of course, depends on uh, your body levers and as, uh, could be individualized and, and uh, vary depending on what your body type is. But I personally like to set up, when I grab my deadlift or when I grab the barbell, I like to set up so that way my, my uh, hips, the crease of my hips, bisects the distance between my knee and my shoulder. So my knee, um, so if you were to grab a ruler, it would be ha my hips would be right at the midpoint right there. Not too high, not too low. Too high becomes uh, way too much of an RDL and you don't get enough uh, initiation, enough activation of the quads. Too low, it's just impossible to pull. You're basically gonna, your hips are gonna rise, rise, rise until the bar actually leaves the ground. There you go. So the last thing to think about also, foot position. Martins is not gonna be driving only with the heels, but he's really gonna have those big toes jammed down and try to spread his body weight across the entire tripod. So foot stability, trying to create an arch. We already talked about how he's driving his knees out to the side, so he's creating a little bit of arch even for people that have a little bit of a flat foot. You're gonna see a little bit more of a balanced foot. Okay. Ooh, one thing that we didn't talk about, I think, is also yeah. alignment. Uh, the bar is above midfoot, and your hand, and then of course your shoulders should be directly in line with that as well. Your shoulders should never be in front of the bar there we or go. behind the bar. So Evan, let me have you come over here uh, to the side and you can see that. So as he gets down into his starting position. So bar above midfoot, I'm gonna start, I basically like to pull myself down, so I'm already creating mm. tension. That's I grip my breath up here, and I start pulling myself down. And then right with my shoulders above my hand, I pull. I like it. Control down, gently tap, and then back up again. Remember, touch the eggshell, don't break the eggshell. Maintaining tension the entire time. Very good. There you go. <laughs> All right, guys. So thanks so much for checking out the deadlift tutorial video with Martins. Uh, if you don't already, head on over to his YouTube channel, give him a subscribe. So if you have any questions for us, let us know in the comment section below. And until next time, guys, happy deadlifting. Uh -huh. Thanks for checking us out. They say that energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching so caught up in their egos, these people have lost.